Dr. Cass, what are we seeing with the rise of COVID in the region, even in the last week, and how much of it is driven by Omicron? So we're seeing an extraordinary number of cases day over day, uh, and we're seeing that uh, people are getting Omicron and Delta. We don't know exactly the portion of cases between Omicron or Delta, but we know that people need to be aware that every interaction could be an exposure and that the best protection you have is to be fully vaccinated and boosted if you are eligible. Yeah, let's put this into context. When we talk about vaccinated versus unvaccinated and whether it's Delta or Omicron, what is the disparity in terms of severity of illness? So it's multiple times more severe illness. It's multiple times, up to 10 times more likely to be either hospitalized or unfortunately pass away. It's pretty extraordinary, the difference between the protection of any vaccine versus no vaccine. It's also really important to remember that if you get exposed to COVID, it's important to be vaccinated before that happens. So today is the day to get vaccinated for an exposure that could happen tomorrow or the next day. So really, when you talk about that disparity, we're seeing cases that present much more like a common cold, even a very slight flu for those who are vaccinated, yes? Yes. And in fact, as we transition to probably a predominant Omicron case, we expect to see that more and more because we see more breakthrough infections. With Delta, we were not seeing this number of breakthrough infections on fully vaccinated and even boosted individuals. Now with Omicron, we are. But we're also seeing is the vaccine and that boost provide an extraordinary amount of protection against any illness that could land you in the hospital or unfortunately put you on a ventilator. We are now um, several days into more than 6,000 cases here in New Jersey. Anyone who's going to get tested because they may be a direct, have a direct exposure or even think that they may be positive, now has to stand on those lines that we all remember from early on in the pandemic. If Omicron takes over as the predominant variant, it could be four times more contagious. Do we have the testing capacity to handle what could be coming our way? So I think that we do have the testing capacity, but we will need more. What we're seeing as our positive test rates go up and up is that we're going to need to be testing more people more frequently. It's going to be a combination of the PCR tests that people are getting a lot of times in those lines and the at-home tests. What I would say is if you can get any at-home tests now, have them in your house so that the minute that you have either an exposure or a symptom, you can actually test yourself at home. And then if you need to confirm that for some reason, like you need to confirm it for a flight or you need to confirm it for your doctor, then you can look to the lines around you to see where that testing is available. I also encourage people to find out all the places that there are testing uh, capacities around them now before they actually need it. And then finally, what should people be doing in terms of practicing um, masking, social distancing as the holidays are approaching? So we know what to do here. This is the same thing we've been doing since this pandemic started almost two years ago. You want to start keeping your circles a little bit smaller now because you don't want to you want to decrease the risk that you're going to get exposed to COVID. The way I say to it now is it needs to be a combination of boosters and behavior. Uh, we want to make sure that we're masking up in public spaces. We want to make sure that we're obviously vaccinated. And we want to make sure that we know those contacts we have. So if we find out that we are positive for COVID, we can go back for the previous two days and tell everybody that they've been exposed. They too can protect their fellow citizens. Dr. Derek Hass, thank you so much. Have a great day.